Welcome back everybody to another episode of Rudy's Electronics Lab. And today I'm going to talk about selecting a device in my laboratory that I can use for bear testing. And so this is part of a, a, a series of videos I'm making about uh, bit error rate testing. Um, so if you want to know what, what bear testing is, um, is about, what we're trying to do here, I suggest you, uh, you take a look at our opening episode and some of the other episodes here. And today I specifically want to look at uh, a variety of devices I got in my lab, and you see already a couple of them over, over here and next to me, uh, to, the, to the left of me, which are all devices that actually have advertised uh, bear testing uh, capabilities um, in them, either being a generator that can be used for that, uh, or basically being a, um, a bear tester. And I want to look at them basically and see which of them will be able to do the type of, of bear experiments that I'm having in, um, in, in mind here. Um, and in order to do so, I want to look at them in, in a systematic way and compare them against a set of features, what I would be calling basically uh, my ideal type of, of bear test uh, functionalities in a device. So, um, so what are the type of, um, of functionalities I'm actually looking for? Now, the, um, my ideal uh, generator, let me focus by, for a moment on the, on the generator part here, that will be creating uh, pseudo-random bit sequences like, like, like PN9 sequences, and I talked in the other video what that actually uh, is, um, will be the following. It would, um, first of all, create, of course, a, um, a proper type of, uh, of PRBS code, pseudo-random code, but ideally it would also generate a modified code where we could pre-program type of errors in, uh, in there. So we could use that to, to basically uh, try out the different testers, how they react on, on, on known type of errors, that we, we indeed see the number of errors and the type of errors that we would expect to find given our, our testing scenario, but that would also allow us basically to use generic devices such as oscilloscopes basically as, 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 as bear testers rather than having specific uh, lab devices that are made for, for bear testing. Um, so I'm interested in that and ideally um, those correct type of outputs and the outputs with the programmed errors in there will be available at the, at the same time. Now I've got a couple of other desires here. One of them is that I would like to have a, um, a clock out signal. Well, I wouldn't only like to have one, actually most of the bear testers that I have actually require a, uh, a clock signal. So it's, it's, it's really a, a kind of a hard need. But I would also like to have something like a, a, a output for, for frame start so we can see each time like a new sequence of, of pseudo random bits is, 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 is being sent out. Um, and also related to the first thing I talked about, I would like to have an error bit that basically shows me when there is a difference between the correct code and the, the code with the pre-programmed um, errors. Um, how long should the code sequence be? Well, I would be okay with, uh, with a PN9 uh, code. So uh, a 9 bits code, that's a code that repeats itself every 511 uh, bits. Optionally, we could have something like a PN11 code or a PN15 code, but that's, that's not very important to me right, uh, right now. Other things that are basically not so important to me, I would say, is um, the speed by which a generator can create this type of signal. It would be nice if it's kind of sufficient that we can do something like maybe 100 kilohertz, maybe as much as, as 1 megahertz uh, output speed. Um, doesn't have to be much above, then we get onto all the type of challenges with our test scenario and cables, that's, that's all not necessary. Also mind you that a lot of bear testers use TTL signals, so we don't, don't want to push things to the test. I really want to do some, some fun, fundamental testing. Speed is not so much an issue. What I also don't find to be so important is actually clock uh, stability. So in terms of, of, of drift, of jitter or, or accuracy. Um, and, and, and I must admit that once I started actually building and experimenting with, experimenting with some stuff and I, I actually was building myself some stuff that had a very significant amount of, of, of jitter, um, my, my, my testing devices had no issue with that. They could do, do also bare testing if you have a lot of jitter, but it just didn't feel very good. So in the end, I think we must have at least some, some reasonable expectations for, 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 for clock accuracy and, uh, and, and jitter. But it, it's not kind of a key thing. It, it's kind of more elegant when devices behave in a, in a more reasonable way, I would say. Um, but it's not purely necessarily 
uh, a bear tester basically just looks at the clock signal for when it has to evaluate a bit. And if that clock signal is rather unstable or has jitter, that, that's also fine. It will just evaluate properly what is, is coming in there. Now, being here in the lab and having so many devices around me that, uh, that support uh, bear testing in their specifications, or at least could be used for it, which of the devices can actually kind of do what I would like to do? Now, I made a, um, a table for this. You see the table right now on, on, on the screen, but I'm not going to walk you right through the table right now. Let's look at each of the individual devices. So we build up this, uh, this table here uh, together. So we'll be starting with the devices that have advertised uh, bare functionalities, then look at the devices that don't advertise that functionality but might be used for it, and then we end up looking at uh, do-it-yourself uh, solutions. And I'll be starting with the Rode Nesmores SMIQ, which is, yeah, the device over here. Um, one of my favorite devices, and I've been using it already for, uh, for some, some bear testing type of, um, of things. Um, it comes out of a series of devices of Rode Nesmores signal generators, where the earlier version, I think they were called SMG, maybe also SMB, they were kind of straightforward function generator, and the SMIQ was the first one to have quadrature uh, function, IQ type of function, as the name already um, implies. Now, what does it offer to us? Actually, it has a complete built-in uh, PRBS uh, generator, uh, which is great, it's flexible, it can be easily used, and um, quite a couple of options. So what do we get in terms of the functionalities I was talking about? Does it have a clock out? Yes, no problem. Has a frame out? Yes, got a frame out. Does it have this kind of modified signal with pre-programmed error? No, it, 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 it doesn't. This is something that I came up with myself because I would like also to work with oscilloscopes, but I guess it's a, a bit of an unusual feature, and in any case, it's, it's not here. What is the length of the code? Well, there's PN9, PN11, PN15. I think there are even more of them, but I, I haven't checked them all. Can you also use this device as a tester? So on the other side of the chain, huh? in, my, in my first introduction video, I show you the like the generator on the one side and the tester completely on the other side of the chain. Yeah, you can do that, but it does require option uh, B21 to be present. And I don't have that in my SMIQ, um, so I, um, I can't experiment with, uh, with that. So yeah, this device is looking quite good in terms of what, what we can do with it here. Second device is also one of my favorites, the Rode for CMU 200 telecommunications tester. They also have a build-in uh, pseudo-random bit sequence functionality. A fairly advanced one, uh, but one that is really designed to work in the context of the specific standards that the device can, uh, can test. Um, can you use it as a generic tester? I think you can. I, I haven't tried it, I should tell you. But if you have the, uh, if you have the, 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 the IQ option installed in the device, I, I, I have it on, on one of my devices. I got two videos uh, about how to, to, to install it and, and, and get it working. Um, if you got that uh, IQ functionality, if you choose the, uh, for example, the, the, the GSM standard and you go to the non-signaling version of it, then I think basically you should be able to get the, uh, uh, the pseudo-random signal basically out of that IQ interface and even enter it again and do testing on it. Now, there are a lot of advanced testing scenarios, and you can also see it in one of the videos that I made with the CMU for uh, uh, when we do GSM um, terminal testing with it. Uh, you can do a, a lot of fairly advanced uh, bare type of testing scenario, but it's not so much a generic type of, uh, of, of device. So it's not exactly what I'm looking for um, in my current uh, range of, of bare testing activities. What else do we have? Yeah, we have the, uh, the Rode Nesworth um, AMU 200A right over here. And I mentioned that device in my introduction video as a fading simulator that you will be using kind of in between the generator and the, and the bear tester uh, to, to simulate uh, the characteristic of a particular channel. And that's really what the device is, um, is, is, is built for. Um, and it doesn't have any, any uh, pseudo-random bit sequence generator, so that's, that's out of the question. However, I'm also mentioning it now as, as one of the devices because it has a possibility for a bare tester. Um, but that possibility requires option K80. I don't have K80 installed in my unit over here, um, so I can't, uh, I can't test uh, with it. Also, when I was going through the specification of the MU, 
um, I, I, I saw how you would be using that option together with like remote uh, code, but I didn't see if there's any like user interface directly into the device that you can do this testing. I'm, I got the feeling there isn't, but, but since I don't have the option, I can't kind of play with it. Um, but since I don't have this option anyway installed on the machine, uh, yeah, my MU is out of the question, at least as a, a tester. But I will be using it in, in some of my later videos basically um, as, a, as a channel simulator. And that's what it's mainly designed for. Yeah, then the, the Anritsu. And that device is going to be pretty important for this series of videos because it has a bear tester built into it as a standard. And that will be the one that I will be using also in some of my the later videos that I'm planning uh, right now. And it's just fantastic that this comes as a standard. So unlike all the Roden and Sword devices, or most of the Roden and Sword devices where there are separate options which I don't have, um, it's already built into that. You actually can have an option for a most adv more advanced tester, bear tester there, um, and that more advanced version can deal with higher speeds and also has some additional functionalities like the sensitivity of the input. So you can deal with not only TTL signals, but also other type of signals. Um, I don't have that advanced option, um, but that's not so much of an issue because it's already fantastic that we got this bear tester over here. So that is, that is great. Can it also work as a generator? Yeah, that's a bit of more of a difficult thing. It's not a standard building functionality. Um, however, it's a waveform player uh, in its essence. So you could basically upload a waveform file, an ARB file, um, that, that represents a pseudo-random bit sequence and have it playing out. Now, if you would do so, how would, would it, it kind of meet the criteria that I mentioned earlier? Does it have a clock out? Yeah, no. In, in my review of the device I already mentioned, this is one of the remarkable shortcomings of the, the Anritsu, that it doesn't have a clock out. There is a workaround with it that you just connect an external clock to it and you basically just tap out of that external clock. So yeah, that, that would be an option there. Does it have a frame start? Yes. Could you also have this real and modified code? Yeah, in principle, yes, because we got two channels on the, on the Anritsu. So one of them could represent the, uh, the proper code, and the other one could represent the code with the, with the, the pre-programmed type of errors in there. And it will be playing out at the same time. Um, I haven't been testing it, uh, but in principle, I think it should work. And what type of code you could use? Well, since you're putting pre-recorded code to it, uh, in it, um, then I think anything would go uh, so far as the memory allows you. And the Andrizzo really has a super generic uh, amount of, 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 of memory in it. Um, so yeah, any kind of thinkable codes, PM9, 11, 15, but also much longer, would be no issue uh, there. Now the next one that I want to talk about in my lab is the, um, the PicoScope 3000 series. I, I got it right over here. I'm a little bit surprised I'm going to talk about this device uh, right now. Yeah, let's, let's hold it over here. Um, because I, I hadn't expected it would play any role in my, 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 my bear testing stuff until the moment I came along that actually the PicoScope has built-in PRBS uh, signal generating facilities. It's built into the computer software huh, that, that you use in conjunction with this, uh, with this, uh, this oscilloscope. Uh, so it's mentioned in the, uh, the data sheet. Unfortunately, there's no information whatsoever to be found in the, um, in the manual. And also, if you basically play around with the user interface, and you can go to the, the signal generator, and you can go to a, a PRBS mode, but there's, there's no other information on what it's actually doing. It took me a bit of effort to find out some more details about it, and eventually I came across some information uh, by, 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 by technical support people uh, of PicoTech, I think that's how the company is called, huh? the Pico Technology, yeah, and they make the Pico Scope series devices. Um, and that information basically tells us it generates a PN24 code only. And that might be kind of nice because it's a very long code, and there might be some specific interesting applications for that. But actually, such a long code is not very convenient for me because I don't even think my, my testing devices can handle such long codes as, as testers. Um, so it's not very useful. Then on top of it, the signal generator is signal channel. We're not getting a clock out. We're not getting a frame start signal. We can't do the modified signal at the same time. So we're not getting anything else here. And of course, not going to be a tester either. So yeah, in the end, we can't do so much with it, even if they have an advertised uh, pseudo-random bit sequence uh, function there. 
Now moving to the devices which don't advertise to have pseudo-random code generates in them, but we could nevertheless perhaps use them for that. Let's take a look at a generic uh, signal uh, generator. And I'm looking in this case at my Siglent SDG series. I have a 1000X and a 2000X. Uh, this is the 2000X here on the, on the table. And, 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 and here basically what we can do um, is again upload a, 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 a file to the device, a waveform file that represents uh, basically the, the bit sequence that we're, uh, we're interested in. Um, but we have then all the options or all the features that we're looking for. Um, a clock out, well not by itself. Um, I also would have liked that all these type of devices simply have a clock out for whatever they're doing, but they, they don't. However, if you would use it in conjunction with an external clock and then tap off this external clock, you would, you would have it. But then, then you need an additional device. Um, how about the other things like a frame start or a modified signal uh, and this at the same time? Um, yeah, that, that is possible if we would use the second channel. Huh? These are two channel generators here. Um, but it's two channels. We cannot have it all at the same time. So either we get the frame chart start at the same time or we get a modified signal at the same time or this error signal that I started to talk about in the beginning, but not, not all of it at the same time. How long can the codes be? Yeah, 9, 11, 15, depending on the memory depth of the device. I think the, the, 100, the 1000X series is much more limited in memory than the, 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 the 2000X. You would need to see exactly how much memory space are really required. And, and, and again, these are not going to be testers. Now, finally moving to the idea of building something your, yourself. And the first thought I was having here is that yeah, build a hardware shift register because that's kind of the original idea about generating this type of, uh, of files. So what, what would that be, be looking like? Well, in my, um, in my introduction videos already showed like a, a kind of a block diagram. It's, it's a rather straightforward, simple shift register solution uh, where you would have uh, a couple of feedback circuits in there uh, depending on the, the, the depth of the, the, the bit code. Um, so this hardware basically could be, could be built. Um, however, if we would look at the additional things that we want there, is that all feasible? Um, clock out, yeah, that, that, that shouldn't be an issue. Frame start, yeah, that's already more of an issue. And then we also need to start thinking about that we cannot just start such a shift register device in, in an unknown type of state. We would need to have it starting with a seed code to know about its behavior and that we actually really get a PN9 code and not any code that wouldn't work on our devices. So, it already starts to get a bit more complex because of this startup seed code and, 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 and then also ideally having followed that we have the frame start again coming after 511 bits. This modified code ID, yeah, that will be even harder than, than I think you even have to put like a piece of memory next to it that would remember like bit position 5, I want to insert an error, bit position, uh, I don't know, 316, I want to, to have a bit error. So, so then it already starts to get harder. We need counters, other stuff. Simultaneous output, yeah, if we can generate it all, it can be simultaneous. The length of the code, yeah, that depends on you know, how deep the shift register is and then you can make these, these various type of feedback as they are required for, for PN11 and 15. But it all gets fairly complex. And I've thought this all over. There are not much ready-made designs available on the, on the internet here. And, and eventually I... I kind of shied away from, from building this shift register all my, uh, myself. But then we go to the final thing, and this is something that I did build. Um, this is the idea of building such a pseudo-random bit generator with a, uh, with a microprocessor development board. So we can, take an, uh, we can take an Arduino board perhaps, or a Raspberry, or, or there's a lot of different choices on, uh, on the market. Um, and what type of principle then would we be using to, uh, to generate signal? Well, there could be different principles. You could basically have the shift register ID, ID but then implement it in software. So we would live in the software generate basically the output of these, uh, these shift registers. Uh, that, that code is not necessarily very difficult. Um, but we could also, like with, with the signal generators, uh, have a pre-recorded code already in the device and we could store that basically, for example, as, as, as an array in, in the C++ uh, language and, and basically play back from, uh, from that. How about all the other things that we are interested in? A clock out, a frame start signal, modified type of codes. 
yeah, that's, that's all very well possible. And once you start to write this type of, of, of code on your microcontroller, all these things can be done rather easily. All these microcontrollers have abundant number of, of, of output pins, so that's, that's all can be well done. How long can the code be? Uh, PN9, 11, 15. Yeah, basically you can go to very long codes as well, um, but it, it increases the, 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 the complexity a bit, and especially if we store the code as, as an as, as a, as a array, um, then, then you quickly need a lot of, of memory. That also has a little bit to do with the fact that how C++ basically stores array uh, values. Uh, well, basically, if you want to store a single bit in an array, he still needs a byte of room to store that, that bit. That seems to be something the case for, for all C++ implementations. Um, and when I was trying to build something for, for PN9, I already found out that that, that, that entry-level Arduinos, such as the Uno R3 or the Uno R4, basically, don't have the amount of memory uh, available uh, to be able to do that uh, in the first place. So I already needed to resort to larger memory Arduinos and later also to faster Arduinos to, to do everything that I, um, I wanted to do. But having said that, this is a feasible scenario, and actually here you already see the result of that, uh, that exercise. This is a PN9 generator that I've been building over the last couple of uh, months here, and it actually satisfies all the features that I, uh, that I listed out uh, before. Um, but I'm not going to talk uh, right now in great detail. There will be a separate video basically about how this device is built and also share the information that you could also build a copy of it yourself. So getting back to my overview table and what we get to see now in this table is, is everything we already saw here. Yes, we got a lot of devices in the lab that, 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 that advertise to have uh, bare functionalities or could be used for it. It doesn't yet include the ideal device, what I would like to, to be doing. So eventually for the, for the next couple of videos in this uh, series, I'm going to resort mostly to my, 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 my homebrew uh, solution here. And we're going to look at how that all, uh, all works. Uh, but we might be using some of the other options like the SMIQ um, at some point uh, and perhaps even some of the other devices when, when need be because there, there are multiple possibilities depending on what exactly you want to do and, and what effort you want to put into it in, in actually yeah, generating the type of signals that you're interested in. Well, I hope this, uh, this video was, uh, was useful for you. Um, do check out my other videos on bit error testing um, and my other videos on other topics as well, as well on the channel and um, hope to see you back here soon.